Hello, Mr. Pelican. Nothing for you yet. Anybody ever eaten a pelican in a survival situation? Leave it in the comments below. We're curious what they taste like. I'm pretty sure, kind of like the Merganza, of the Wood of Beardsman and I ate in Canada, fish birds are not very tasty. Duck's a bit on the dry side. Here we go. We're scared to swim in the ocean. Aren't we? A little bit. Just a little bit. I know there's nothing that'll eat me in Maine for the most part. Or at least up to a couple years ago when there was this fatal encounter with a great white, which never happened again, and I try not to think about that kind of thing when I'm getting in the water. But I know I just have to swim faster than Sarah. So off on a new oceanic adventure here in Florida. Fish on. This is what we came here for. Looking good. Woo! Big old barracuda. Like that big. It was huge. Oh, that one. That's a big one. Clean shot right behind the ear. Beautiful. I'm Zachary Fowler, and that's my lovely wife, Sarah, and you're watching Fowler's Makery and Mischief. Yeah, it's not Yeah, it's not moving really fast. I think we're pretty safe. You ready? Yeah, you go first. Me first. So I got a little ladder at the store. I'll use that just in case. Silicone grease for my face. See if that helps put the beard. All right, got our bag. Drop that in. Got our marker. I felt pretty good about this uh, in my head, but uh, I'm actually quite nervous. All right, here we go. No more chicken and out. It does feel kind of heavy, but yours is lighter. I Yours is six pounds, mine's ten. You don't want to sink right to the bottom and stay down there when I'm when I want to. Alright. Uh no more excuses. It's uh time to get in. No more stalling. Like you're shaking. Might be a little. I've only been diving a few times and if you're wondering why I'm acting like a big baby, it's because I've watched a bunch of YouTube videos before I came down and some people were catching some pretty good sharks from the corners of the bridges where I'm diving right now. But we're looking for lobsters and that's where they are. To work up my courage the day before, we tested our gear out and went somewhere a little bit more secluded the locals told us about. It's a nice little protected place with lots of pretty fish and no sharks. <laughs> when we came down here to film this, it was winter time, which meant everywhere we went, it wasn't busy. Which meant we even had the rooftop pool at the Pine Key Cove campground to ourselves. And a beautiful continental breakfast with all of our camping neighbors. Sometimes it's nice not to have to catch your own food. I decided to start here on my search for the lobsters because some of the people at the campground said there's a nice little bit of a uh, crevice underneath the bottom of the pier for the bridge. People hit spots like this pretty hard, but it's an easy spot to dive on. It's only about 12 feet deep and we're not very experienced. And I just wanted two nice little lobsters for us to eat. I've never had anything but a main lobster before and I want to see if it tastes different. Getting out of breath. Yeah. It takes a, I think it takes a lot of practice. Yeah, and I gotta pee. Even. Uh, <laughs> it's nice and warm right here now. Thank you. 
That's hard. He came out and swam off to another spot right here. That's hard. I think that's why they need a lot of people to do two people. It's gonna take him. Get new I should have just grabbed him. Guys are fast. Uh, I gotta figure it out. It's gonna take a little bit of practice. I think I'll get them though. I was struggling with my mask a little bit. Water kept getting in and trying to go up my nose, but every time I went down, there was just so much to see. I wanted to stay down forever. One of the times I popped up and I looked down in, there was even a giant manta ray that just swam majestically past me like nothing was going on, not a worry in the world. It's a beautiful day. And meanwhile, I'm half drowning because it turns out beards and snorkeling isn't a thing. No! I don't want to give up, but man. I say we go over in there. Where it's shallower. There's some the rock outcropping. All right, why don't you get your... There we go. What do you need me to get? Uh, out. Out of the water? I think so, so you're safe and... Okay. okay. You all set? We're fine. Oh, okay. You go. Yeah, without that bag, it's not that hard to swim. barracuda like that big it was crazy the gopro doesn't do that barracuda justice i mean it was huge it had to have been at least five or six feet long at least it felt like it was i am quickly learning that things appear larger than they truly are when you're underneath the water I think it's too small. Oh. That is a lot of work when the tide's starting to move here through, so it's, it's uh, getting harder to get down and get back up, move the, I don't know how those guys do it. It's a lot of work. I came that close. That one lobster, too small. I'm pretty sure that other one that I lost because after seeing the too small one and thinking at first when it was in its hole, it was big. I know now that like that other one would have been a keeper and I lost it. That stinks. It's so difficult while underwater gauging how large these lobsters are. The GoPro makes it seem pretty obvious that this guy is way too small to be a keeper. But when I'm in the water, it looks like it's this. And I think, hey, I found one, which wouldn't be a big deal. But we had to get a permit and the lobsters have to be three inches across the back to be legal to keep them. Oh, that's not so bad. That's pretty easy, actually. Yeehaw. Well, that was fun. So my watch just beeped at me too. And it says, I don't know if you can see that. Probably not. 55 minutes and 626 calories. It feels like it. What you got there, banana chips? Oh, I love these plantain chips. Me too. We gotta buy like 50 bags to bring them home, or? No. Well, I guess we could probably just buy them on Amazon. I'm gonna talk with my mole fell, or I'm gonna cut here and we're gonna go find another spot. Uh, 
yeah, some sort of corally type thing. I don't know. So we came to where we were told there might be a good spot. There's some rocks and stuff. Oh, there's another lobster trap thing. They just look like crates. They don't look like lobster traps at all. Like nothing like I've ever seen. There's all kinds of rocks and stuff in here. I mean, if we just swam around in all of this, I feel like, you know, we're only like three feet deep. Do it? All right. You spot them, and I'll, I'll hook them. The prettiest first mate that a guy could ever have. And then almost falling off the boat. This tiny boat. We, we need to like upscale by just a couple feet, you know? Just a couple, couple feet bigger would be nice. Well, we're figuring it all out on our own. I'm sure there's gonna be a bunch of comments like, you nincompoops, why are you looking for lobsters there? That's like the most worstest of places and lobsters don't like that, you know what? Our second location we moved to was just a little bit shallower and also another tip from our fellow campsite friends. And there was a lot of sea life, but we didn't have a lot of luck finding any of the shelves or overhang features that the lobsters like to dig in and hide underneath. Eventually, my persistence in swimming for over an hour brought us to a different location and more and more lobsters started showing up. But I was still having a hard time identifying and finding bigger ones, and when I did find one that seemed bigger than all the others, he always managed to get away from me. I got one! <laughs> but we gotta measure it, it doesn't look very big. Well, at least there's one where there's one, there's one. Yeah. Oh, it's way under. Really? Yeah, shy by like a half, quarter inch or more. Oh, well. There we go, go by. Unfortunately, despite my persistence and even finding a sweet spot that seemed to have a ton of them, they were all a quarter inch small and I was getting tired and I was losing more than I was catching. Next thing I knew I was popping up and it was getting dark and I had been at this for over four hours. I was done. No lobsters, sun going down, sharks coming in. No, I don't know, <laughs> but uh, I'm beat. Ankles are worn out and uh, it's getting cold now that I'm wet and stuff. Time to, time to head in, maybe, maybe tomorrow. Time to get back in the water. I did a bit of rigging up this morning and uh, Sarah caught like one small yellow tail snapper. But now it's like 35, 40 minutes before it's complete slack tide. I noticed yesterday my feet were chafing, so I didn't bring any socks to Florida. <laughs> I don't wear socks very often, but uh, I got Sarah's socks. So you, she brought at least one pair. I have to say, getting in the water is hard. Like once I'm in, I feel pretty good. But before I get in, I'm like super nervous. Like we saw boot, lobster traps and stuff out there. We don't know what's out there. It's only like six feet or eight feet at times and stuff. But it's like, that's like out in the open sea. Kind of freaks me out. There's just the same stuff in and around these bridges, but like, I don't know. I feel a little, a little, you know, getting in. Jelly, my face. I really wish it was crystal clear, like just crystal clear. I'd feel 
so I could just see everything. You're being a whip. Get in the water. You didn't see that barracuda yesterday. Water. It was like this big, and that, and then I sent somebody. The largest barracuda caught is only eighty-seven pounds, so that's way. Small. Eighty-seven pounds. Eighty-seven pounds could still take a giant chunk out of me. I know there's probably not any. We're not going to look it up. I don't want to know. We're not going to. You should take your ring off though, because they do like shiny things. The barracudas. Never taking my ring. Is that a thing where they go after rings? Is that true? Leave in the comments below. I don't want to take my ring off. That's naughty. All right, I'm taking my ring off because Sarah's worried about me losing my ring finger. I don't have my tickle stick. I'm not getting in the water. I'm not getting soft. It's scary in there. Oh, my shirt's on. I can't get my shirt off. I can't get. Oh shoot! All right. You need to get in there. You get in there. I'm fishing. Go get me a lobster. Do all the work for me. You're gonna watch as I get eaten alive by cannibal barracudas. I guess it would be cannibals up there. Don't you dare start chumming. She says she's gonna chum the water on me. What kind of a wife is this? She's ready to get rid of me already. Sorry. Uh, Did I get you? No. You scared me. I thought there was a barracuda on the boat. All right. <gasps> Woo! It feels cold today. I think I should get out. <laughs> I so want to scare you right now. I'm be like, watch out behind you. Once I was back in the water, it was fine. I saw all kinds of pretty fish and I dove around several more of these bridge abutments and found zero lobsters. So we decided to head back out to that shallower spot. We didn't find any keepers there yesterday, but we were finding a lot more lobsters. After moving over to the other spot, I found several of them in and around this rock. I thought I'd try catching them with my hand instead of using the net because I wasn't very successful the day before with that, but it seemed more likely that I was just going to break off antennas and hurt them, so I left them be because they were a little bit on the small size and headed back to the boat for a little ibuprofen and Sarah had the idea of dragging me behind the boat. This way we could cover more ground and hopefully I would expend less energy, and she took a lot of pleasure in dragging me around like a giant fishing lure. Now this is livid. This is nice. Do you want me to go faster? And after three hours of being dragged behind the boat and catching and releasing several other undersized lobsters, I finally found a good looking lobster. Two days of grinding. Beautiful Florida lobster. Now we need one for me, because I got one for you, hun. Thank That's you. That's for you. Here you go. Thank you so much. And uh, let's we'll put them in the cooler on on ice. I think. Yeah. Is probably the best thing. Is it a, is it like a Maine lobster? Can we tell, male or female? Um, I don't know. I don't Actually, think they're the, yeah, those are the swim fins, those are the sex fins there, but I don't know what the difference is. That looks a little bit like the main lobster female with their, their soft swimmy fin things going on in here. All right, Our first Florida lobster, what a grind. I am getting so worn out in the water and half drowned the water getting into my mask and into my nose and, oh, 
Jeepers creepers. Let's keep towing you. Keep towing me? Yeah. Because <laughs> you want me to be able to have one too? I don't just get a taste of yours. No, no I'm, not I'm kidding. You even have a taste. <laughs> You're not even letting me have it. <laughs> All right, we gotta get one more. So I caught my breath and jumped back in to get that second lobster, but I was only under for a minute when I heard Sarah starting to yell. Huh? That shark was pretty big. Oh yeah? Yeah. Coming out? Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty big. Like, Bigger, four feet. Longer than you. Really? Uh -huh. Not really what you want to hear when you're down there diving around, going after lobsters, and you're too busy to watch your own back. But I was on a mission, and I wanted a second lobster. Oh, he's got to be too small. We're getting in the habitat, though. We're coming across them left and right, and that's too small for sure. It looks so big underneath of there. Yeah, it's a half an inch too small. But we're in the area. There's a giant hermit crab in the, in the size of the shell that I gave you already. Wow. It was huge. Huh. I've never seen anything like that. Cool. I got him. I got him. I think this is it. I got him. So close, if it's not. Oh, it's just under. Oh, sorry, fella. I should say congratulations, fella. At this point I had been in the water all day long, over seven hours of swimming around, catching lobsters and finding out they're too small. So when I found the stone crab, I was pretty excited. He's got me. We got each other. Well, it's not another lobster, but I've never had stone crab before, and as long as the claws are two and seven eighths inches, it's legal. Just remove the claws and throw it back and try not to get pinched. My thumb is instantly turning black. Mm -hmm. It is throbbing. Three inches. So our crab is good too. We got our stone crab. <laughs> he's, he's like, come on. Come at me, bro. Although he may not enjoy his claws being removed, he will live to fight another day and he'll grow back new claws. Nice. Just a little one, but a seafood melody. We got lobster, crab, and stingray that is quite the haul all right that's enough for me we got one crab one lobster i'm gonna put him down right there he's trying to look at him he's trying to stab us like that is his little spike there and these guys the lesser electric ray 
It literally can electrocute. I don't know if I dare to touch it. I don't know. I'm not going to do it. There we go. So we'll put him in the cooler. We'll have a bit of everything. I did want to get a lobster and we want to eat it and we want to know what it's like. So we're going to not do it the way I would keep seeing a lot of YouTubers do where they just they break off the tail and that's all they eat. We're going to eat the legs, we'll roll out the meat like we do with the main lobster and we'll eat all the meat that we get up in the knuckles of their antennas. And we got our little shrimps we caught the other day so we'll have a nice little um, seafood, melody, all kinds of flavors. That'll be so good. And Sarah sees a fish jumping so we got to get on catching one more fish. I'm freezing. Where's my sweatshirt? Oh, look at all the fish scales coming out of the chum. Mm-hmm. All right, we chummed it up, and the sun is setting. Oh, goodbye, sun. So I'm on a cross over there. Mm -hmm. As little as I saw around here, I don't know. And a big old conch right there. He's just kind of like moseying along. You can't see it, but the little head of him sticking out over there and he's just like tasting his way along. And Sarah's trying to catch us a mackerel or a barracuda. Whatever's over here. And then we're gonna head in. And lately we've been going out to eat a lot. We haven't been filming as much in the evenings and, uh, and as much at all. I kind of took a break from the uh, filming to just spend some time together. I always get us all into like grinding so hard to try to achieve some sort of goal. I'm like, let's not do this. And she's like, I want you to be successful. Let's try really hard. It's like, you can't get up, give up. And she kept telling me, get back in the water after I took my breaks earlier. <laughs> want me to take us somewhere there's more likely to be fish? Yeah, but we just chummed right here. Oh, well, we'll just... Um, pick it up and hook it to the side and set it back out again. Okay. Alright, we're gonna move to where the fish are. Oh, something's jumping over there. I was pretty white, but Sarah talked me into going over to this spot that uh, she had hooked up onto something really big and we ended up losing it the night before. The way it ran and broke off her line, I figured it was probably a shark. So I put a steel leader with a circle hook and threw a live fish on there and put that out behind the boat. Then we spotted tarpon hitting shrimp on the surface, so I tied on a voodoo jig and see if I could hook up on one. Got one. Got something. Oh, big fight. Ha <laughs> ha. What do I got? Whoa. Oh, he shook it. Oh, I lost him. Dang, that was crazy. It's probably a tarpon, don't you think? I think it might have been. We have to let those go, don't we? Yes. Oh. Woo! Oh, he's going under my own line. Oh. Broke me off. After losing two tarpon, which weren't on my list and not hooking up on that shark, we decided to call it and head it home. The boat was a mess, I was exhausted, and we had a ways to go to navigate back through the dark. This is, uh, I can't remember the name of it, swimming hole something or other. And uh, it's kind of a deep hole right here, but it goes all the way back there and we came uh, a couple days earlier and just took a quick dip and got used to the whole floor thing. It's kind of dark and murky at the bottom, but there's nothing here to be afraid of. So it was a great starter spot for going swimming and getting used to it. It goes out to the ocean that way and there's 
beautiful piles of fish all through here. I don't know what draws them in here so much. Maybe the sanctuary for the little fish that are in here, the little guys and stuff. So they can hide up in here into the mangroves and then the bigger fish come in and I don't know what's growing on all this stuff, but these bigger fish are cruising in around here. I think those are all, that's like a 12 inch fish right there. You could spear fish and cook something with just getting your toes wet right here. Or you could just come and enjoy them and swim around like these guys are. We're just snorkeling around and enjoying it. But we got our lobsters and we thought we'd come somewhere else besides the campground and cook up our lobsters. I gotta build a little a little awning area or something here. So let's get set up and uh, cook up our lobster and find out if it tastes different from a main lobster. That's what I wanna know. Here, you gotta be like super careful. You leave out anything for a short period of time and it's wilted and just sad looking. And I wish I had the glamper down here. It's like chaos in the truck trying to keep everything organized. You either spend all of your time organizing after every single thing you do, or you spend all of your time looking for stuff because you didn't organize. <laughs> oh, garlic, you can't do it without the garlic. All right, I guess first thing I wanna do is clean the stingray. That's gonna be one of the hardest things to do. It's not very big, but we'll clean her up and we'll get a taste of what it's like. They say stingray is like poor man's scallop. And this one, hopefully we get some of that flavor and that taste. And we'll be able to enjoy that with the lobster, pairing with the shrimp and the crab. It's kind of a whole melody of wonderful flavors all in a one day catch and cook, which is pretty cool. I mean, obviously one day catch, one day cook maybe, I don't know. But it was, it's been less than 24 hours. So pretty cool. All right, this is where it gets interesting. That's the barb right there, where it could sting you. Now, what we want to do is the meat is one fillet each side. I can feel a difference, and I'm thinking that that all of this is cartilage on a bigger one. The fillet is the softer stuff here, unfortunately. But we'll we'll cut cut it off, and then we'll we'll see. Feel it working along the bones. Not a lot on this little guy. Maybe I can do better on the other side. There we go. Did much better on the second side. I had realized how small he was. I don't think I would have speared him. Like underwater, there's you. You gotta understand, there's like such an illusion. On the GoPro, it probably looks tiny, but that's more like the reality of what it is. When you're down there with your goggles, I could have sworn that this thing was like that big across. And the same thing with each of the lobsters. I'm like, oh, I finally got a keeper. I go down for it and I pull it up. And if they look like a small one, they, they were like, they turned out to be the size of a crawfish. And if it looked like it was a big one, they always turned out to be like an, half an inch under and they're just little teeny guys. And it's so, you gotta like get used to that and figure out and calibrate. Everything is half the size it looks like there. I'll save the rest of this guy for shark bait. See if we can catch one of those. I've always wanted to catch a shark and so far we've been unsuccessful, but we haven't really tried all that hard on the trip. Let's fillet these up the rest of the way and then we can start prepping all the other food and get it on to cook. I am so hungry. Sarah brought me back a treasure she found. Mmm, fresh coconut, super good. There we go, a little piece of. Mmm, that looks good.
kind of has a mushroomy type smell to it. Just crisping them up in the pan. Pretty much done. Nobody seems to do up the bodies. They just take the back of it off. So we're going to do that. A lot of meat right there. And I think I'm just going to cook it up like a main lobster and just cook the whole tail up. So we'll go like that. There we go. Throw in the antenna, the top. I don't know if that's true, why they don't do the whole body, but they said it tastes gross and you regret it. So, for this one at least, since we didn't get two, we're going for it. Meat in the pot. And our fistful of shrimp we caught, but I'm gonna put those in after this is already cooked for a little bit. So we'll cover that up. Okay. Oh, forgot. Corn and taters. It's not a main style cook without corn and potatoes. I'm gonna throw some butter in the pan. If we're gonna try to do this as traditionally the way we would do a pile of seafood at home, I wanna know that when I dip it in the butter, like, wow, this tastes just the same. Or, you know what, it has a slightly fishier flavor or something, and I wonder why that is. And let's just get this right out of the way right now. As we all know, Florida spiny lobster are way better tasting than the Northeast Maine lobster. Make a little Caesar-esque dressing of some sort here. A couple of anchovies, mm. olive oil, peppercorn, parmesan. shrimp in there. Try to keep the grasses out. Not that it matters. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of hard work to get to this point, like so much that you, oh my goodness. Mm. Drove each other nuts, grinding at it. Dr her dragging me behind, she was more than happy, you but. You were the only one driving anyone nuts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or did I drive you nuts too? <laughs> you were dragging me behind the boat, like you really liked it. To dig to we got this. I was bringing you up for the sharks. Yeah, yeah she's, it's like, she tried to go deeper. I'm like, no, don't go deeper. I'm like scared of the super deep and, uh, and then she's like, there's a shark! And like, oh my goodness. That was quite the adventure, but we got it. Oh, I'm gonna say grace. Are you ready to try all the yummy things? Yeah. All right, Lord, thank you for this food. Bless this food to our body in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Oh, okay, so what do we start with first? Let's start with the lobster so that we don't, so we, you know, our palate is like clean right now. And let's see if it's like Maine lobster. There's quite the chunk of meat in this one. Like, that's a really big lobster tail, oh, huh? Loop trail right there, we'll pull that right off of there. I wonder how many calories you burned searching for the lobster. Oh my goodness, yeah. <laughs> like, if it's a survival thing, I two days worth of calories. The watch said that uh, I burned over 2,500 calories every day swimming for that long. So, and who knows how well it recorded it. Recorded it. So, 
Uh, I cut, you pick. This one? All right. Thank you. And dip it and yeah. go for it. All right. Cheers. I love it. I like it. I love it because it's lobster tail, but what do you think? Truly, I... I like it a lot. It has a slightly different consistency than the main mm. lobster tail. It's a, it's, it's a light, like, um, just a little bit more not chewy, kind of like, like comes apart a little bit yeah. better. I kind of like the texture of that. I like it, yeah. I'm gonna send you back out there. <laughs> Main lobster tail is my favorite. And I'd say that this definitely hits the spot. Mm. Is it sweeter? Like I'd come down here and order that at a restaurant. Yeah. It's, it that's, tastes kind of sweeter. It does taste sweeter, is it? Cause I, I, eat it, it. I ate a piece without the butter and it still tasted sweeter. Mm. But in a different way. So I made like a Ray Caesar salad. Mm. Tastes nothing like a Caesar salad. I'm gonna try the Ray. What do you think? I like the Ray. It's, it's good, but it doesn't taste like scallops like I've heard. Yeah, well. But maybe we, if you punch them out, like. And we had this little Ray. I mean, like, look at how mm -hmm. thick. The filet is, it was yeah. like paper thin, so there's not much going on. It does taste like a good fish. Our right, little shrimp that we harvested. Like just about the same as main shrimp. Mmm. Mmm. Those are delicious. Good. All right, stone crab. How are we going to get into it? Well, usually you have crackers. Here, I'll let you have that one. I'll just crack them and hand them to you. Mmm. Even just plain. Mmm. That a nice table and plate. That little fin that's in the middle of the crab claw was just easier to do it with your mouth. You know, I have to admit a bias. Like, I thought... You like me? I, I love Maine. I thought for sure that this warm weather water would, you know, sure they could produce snapper and things like that that everybody covets and wants to have at a restaurant and things, but the odds of them having a good shellfish, you know, having a good lobster and stuff like that. And you know what? They do have a good lobster, but their lobsters don't have claws. Mm -hmm. So that's like, that's a good amount of material less you're getting out of your lobster if you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think that makes Maine better. <laughs> Bit of shell. Well, that about does it for us. We're gonna keep eating, feasting, enjoying ourselves. You heard it from us first, that uh, Florida shellfish, pretty darn good. Maybe not as good as Maine, wink, wink. But it's fun to go after, a lot of work. And man, we feel like you earned it once you get to sit down and eat it. So see you later. Fowler's out. So good. Mm. And that bit's in the tentacle. So, so good. I really like that. Mm, the shrimps, yeah. They're super good, aren't they? Yeah. Just getting into them. <laughs> and we didn't, and we should have, we should have got the big ones. <laughs> <laughs> they all seem you like. We tried to get the big ones. We, we got like three big ones and then a whole bunch of these. So, mmm. I'm just gonna eat them with the shells on. Oh, let me know how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> Seem to crunch right up. Like peanut shells? Yeah, like peanut shells. Mm -hmm. you know, some people just can't do it. They can't eat the fried peanuts with the shells on or the wet peanuts at the... See, I always ate the peanut shells before I knew. You even did before mm -hmm. you knew? Yeah, before they were fried with you. Yeah, we got these fried peanuts once. They were so good. I didn't eat them like all the time. Just once. Yeah, I'd eat like one or two with the shell on. Mm -hmm. Leave it in the comments below. Do you eat your peanuts with the shell on every once in a while, even if they're not the fried ones, which are meant to be eaten whole? Pretty good if you haven't tried it. If you're the person that likes weird stuff.
but know what really tastes good. And not those boiled peanuts from down south, that's disgusting. I don't know what. Sorry guys, can't do that. <laughs>